Tesla, I you love your stock. You love your stock and the mission. But I love yeah. my car too. You're going to make so much more, more money. It's yeah. ridiculous, right? It's a hundred thousand dollars per year per car in perpetuity. Well, I mean, you know, 10, 15 years versus making seventeen thousand dollars profit one time. The company clearly is moving from an auto-driven business, one where they sell a vehicle, they earn a margin, and you got to keep doing that to make money, to a company that is powered by AI software, whether it's in the vehicles, whether it's in the bots and whether it's in the energy storage systems. So these charts were just sort of showing that transition. I think the first one really covers it nicely. And actually, Herbert, if you go to the very end, it's kind of another way of showing it in a stylized way. Um, sorry, there's a lot of slides here. I tend to get carried away with, with uh, charts and slides. Oh my God, how far am I there, gonna go here? There you go, that's it. <laughs> it's another way of looking at it. Uh, the humanoid bots is even bigger long-term than RoboTaxi, but for now, it's Let's focus on RoboTaxi. Hi friends, welcome back. So that was a sampling of what the Tesla pumpers are up to. And uh, essentially it's all about, yes, the future is gonna be humanoid robots. Tesla's gonna be building a whole bunch of these things. And it's in fact going to replace cars as a major function of their company, be it uh, RoboTaxi's AI, humanoid robots, energy, whatever. Uh, remember guys, it is more than a car company. So <laughs> uh, I laugh when I see this stuff because um, there's a couple things I wanna point out as I play some more clips for you is that when you uh, have a discussion with intelligent people, people have real discussions and ask questions of each other. People will debate, people will disagree. Uh, this is what essentially intelligent people do. Now in pumper land, everyone just nods. Yes, yes, Elon smart, yes. Oh yes, we're all gonna be rich, yes. <laughs> and that's essentially what a cult-like atmosphere is like. And so I, I have to point this stuff out to you because I want you to protect yourself when you get sucked into these kind of uh, channels on YouTube. Take a look at some more and uh, look for what I'm saying, yes. Then you're looking at, if you're selling EV, the net profit might be between five and $10,000. But for a robotaxi, depending on the model, if it's operated by a fleet or an individual owner, Tesla might make between 50 and $120,000 over a five year period. So if you want to continue to value this company as an auto company, go ahead, right? Go ahead, but that's not what it's going to be. And hopefully on August 8th, we, we see that in terms of what their plans are and people will begin to understand that. In this next clip, I want you to take a look at how Farzad actually is silent and he's actually silent uh, throughout most of this talk. He doesn't say anything. And um, I think actually Farzad is smart enough to know that all this is BS. That's my opinion on this stuff. And uh, you'll see him message his friend over there, the Xander guy. They'll laugh a little bit and then Farzad will actually leave the call not saying anything. So take a look at this for yourself and see what you think. Yeah, and you know what? It also unlocks value in all our existing Teslas because you're turning a depreciating machine now into a potential money-making machine. This is something that Herbert and I have talked about as well. So if your vehicle is FSD capable, not even if it has FSD purchased on it, but just FSD capable, there's a value unlock to the existing fleet. So that's that's also an interesting thing because the minute that RoboTaxi network is available for use, our vehicles become money-making machines. And these are just some rough numbers in terms of, depending on how long the vehicle's in the fleet, what the multiplier is. And I'm assuming that FSD at this point costs $500 a month, right? Maybe it'll be much less than that. I hope it is. But even at that level, where you're paying out a decent amount of your profits back to Tesla, the value unlock in existing vehicles is is pretty impressive. And lastly, I want to take a look at what the pumplers say uh, about Uber and uh, what they think about Cybertruck and Robo Taxis. Have a listen. Um, I, I don't. I don't think you have to wait. Just let me go take my Cybertruck and get paid to uh, give people rides and bring people into the brand. I'd do it. Yeah, I, I don't see any reason at, at this point to, you don't need to have a robo taxi to start a, a Uber type platform. You know, you could start it now, start seeing it, learning all the hiccups that you're gonna inevitably come along with. So here's a take a look at those charts again. Remember that Tesla is gonna be much more than a car company. It's gonna have AI, robots. They're gonna make a bunch of money on energy, all these kind of things. It's gonna be like hockey stick. Look at all that money they're gonna make. And guys, 
like was this half their company actually over half their company is going to be uh humanoid robots and this is by 2030 <laughs> so six years from now they haven't even like made one robot and sold it to anyone and yet in six years they're gonna sell a whole bunch of things okay uh it, it is so crazy like the, these people and I, I point this stuff out to you because a lot of people still get sucked into it and the basic gist of it is even if someone can make a chart doesn't necessarily mean these charts are accurate but we're dealing with an audience that's like oh my god you made a chart uh, it must be correct because you're smart enough to make a chart and guys anyone can make a chart you can learn to just turn on your PowerPoint your keynote or whatever and make a chart learn how to do it it's not that hard also let me show you this uh, this is a tweet by the guy who is making that presentation his name is CERN Basher and in fact uh, he has uh, uh, this tweet that got 276,000 views uh, it was probably pushed out by the algorithm and uh, remember, this is interesting. Elon can decide uh, which things that they want pushed out and which things not, which I'll explain in a moment here. Uh, but this guy makes out this crazy chart of like, look, you know, Tesla has a path to 100 million robots. <laughs> I laugh because it's such a pipe dream. And um, I, I, I want to mention this stuff because, again, uh, Elon and, and uh, uh, X can push out whatever they like. Uh, this is actually a... Um, uh, 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 comment by a member of our community. Uh, this is from Art uh, Biznet. Uh, Art says, um, I'm hardly on X, but before Elon bought X, I followed him and received notifications whenever Elon tweeted. Then he went weird, so I unchecked notifications from him, but still got them, right? So he wasn't even following Elon anymore, or he was following, but you know, said, don't send me notifications, but he's still getting them from Elon. And then he said here, I finally had to block him, laugh, LOL, but I still get random notifications from people I don't follow. And it always has something to do with Tesla or some political view that I don't care about. Fishy stuff going on here. Not sure if that's normal for everyone. And I replied, but I'll just tell you guys, um, that was my experience as well uh, with the Twitter and X thing. Uh, if you have the app installed on your phone, even if you are not following Elon Musk, you will still get alerts from Elon Musk, even if you're not following the guy, uh, it's so ridiculous. And so I'm just saying um, it, it's clear that they can push out whatever they like. And so this is part of the pumping thing that I, I want to warn you about. Now, um, what I try to do on my channel, because sometimes people complain, the pumper the pumper followers will say, oh, Chris, why don't you give me numbers and stuff like that? So basically what, what they want to see is like a funds of fancy charts and they want me to tell them that Tesla is going to go to the moon. So what I try to do, and, and I want you guys to understand this, the biggest difference between, say, if you watch our, uh, my channel or a pumper channel, pumper channel is trying to convince you in something and they just want lots of people just to nod yes all the time. What I'm trying to do is educate you. It is a very different thing. I don't have to convince you of, of anything. You make up your own mind, but uh, what I try to do is give you the most information I possibly can. So for example, um, uh, this helps you to learn about the world. Uh, if I show you the top automakers in 2023 in terms of like how many uh, cars that they sell, uh, Toyota sells about 11.2 uh, million, um, Volkswagen 9.3, again, this is in the millions, uh, uh, Hyundai, Kia 7.3 million, um, Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi, so 6.4 million, uh, General Motors at 6.19 million, and Stellantis at uh, 6.18 million. So that's the top six in 2023. Um, for those of you watching, you, you can write in the comments, but how many cars does Tesla sell in a year, roughly, just around? Um, and uh, I'll give you the answer. I just want to curious how you guys know. Um, they sell about 1.8 million, so you could call it 2 million. So, you know, General Motors sells three times the amount of cars that Tesla sells, and, you know, Toyota's like five times the amount of cars that Tesla sells. Uh, to give you an idea of like, you know, um, the growth, you can take a look at these kind of charts here. It shows different years of what each, you know, car maker is selling. So say for example, in, in uh, uh, 2021, Toyota was selling 9.5 million and then um, 10.3 million uh, in 2023. I just want to give you guys realistic numbers because the thing that's crazy about it is, remember I showed you in a prior video, the pumpers are telling you that Tesla is going to build 20 million cars a year. <laughs> it's like, okay, double Toyota and, and and, and think about this. I just want you to think about this is that um, that means they're going to have to eat up market share from another company, right? So where is that going to come from? Is, is Mercedes going to go out of business or Nissan or Chevy? Like, is something going to happen like that? Currently, Toyota has about 10% market share. Uh, I want to put this also in um, numbers to just consider as well uh, is where would these cars be sold, right? So this is uh, 2023. And again, my, my goal is just to educate you guys. That's the key. Um, in 2023 in Europe, so it looks like they're, uh, sold about was this uh, we'll call it you know 12.8 but 13 million cars they sold in 2023 they meaning just total automakers as a whole uh, it looks like USA is the biggest market so you know about 15 million cars 16 million something like that Japan you're looking at about 4 million cars sold uh, in uh, 2023 Brazil about 2 million India about 4 million China 
about 25, 26 million. So um, the Chinese auto market, not quite double, but it is double the size of Europe. And I said not quite double, but you know, we could call it double the size of USA, but you know, a lot more than USA, 10 million cars more than USA, and then Mexico, 1.3 million. So um, why do I show you these kind of numbers? It matters, guys, it matters. Um, so when you hear about China and you say, hey, you know, the economy's not doing so great, and uh, you know, this is sort of why if you understand, and I've showed you guys many clips before in the past, where Elon Musk will never say anything bad about China. <laughs> He's under control uh, of, of the of the Communist Party over there. They, he, he knows, I mean, Elon knows who's, who's the boss when it comes to that kind of stuff, so he'll never talk trash about that. And, and I always mention, because it's laughable when, Elon Musk says all day every day, oh, I care about free speech. Free speech is so awesome, but he'll never say bad things about free speech in China, right? He'll, he'll complain about Biden all day, every day. Now he's going to have some sort of fight at Brazil. Hey, you know, if Elon Musk really care about stuff, why don't you talk about China? Well, he doesn't, of course, because China is really important to you and he does not want to go against the government. But I mentioned this stuff because if Tesla completely loses China, meaning BYD does really, really well, that hurts them dramatically. And so, you know, when someone says, hey, okay, uh, they're going to sell 20 million cars a year, who are they going to sell it to? This is the amount of cars that, that are sold around the world. I mean, you can look see it for yourself. Like, so that means you're gonna eat up all all the auto sales in USA. <laughs> like, what? I, I hope you guys understand like like the point of this. And uh, moreover, uh, not only is it ridic ridiculous to say they're gonna sell, you know, um, uh, 20 million cars. I think you know worldwide, you're looking at sales are roughly maybe 80 million, something in that nature. So, or even 100 million in a good year. So that that means like what? Tesla's gonna have 20 percent market share, or something like that. It's, it's just crazy, guys. Um, and the Tesla's deliveries are going down. Uh, their inventories are going up. Again, I'm showing you everything. Um, the pumpers just want you to nod your head and look at unrealistic charts, but I'm trying to show you guys the truth on this kind of stuff. Uh, moreover, used car prices are declining on Tesla. Uh, so that means like they're depreciating very quickly. And also too, with the car, uh, cut, uh, price cuts in the uh, new cars, it really, really hurts the used market. Now, there was some news that came out uh, today that was really interesting. Um, remember that uh, all the pumpers are telling you that robo tax is the future, it's gonna be great, and we're all gonna make money, etc. Um, here, look at this. Robo taxi regulators say Tesla hasn't contacted them about plans uh, teased by Musk, meaning that uh, they're not even applying for permits or anything like that uh, to get their robo taxis on the road. So, you know, usually when, when a company is serious about doing something, you'll start to hear rumors through the pipeline, etc. And um, this is something that I think is important um, is, you know, if you want to drive in California regarding the uh, robo taxis, I guess the California Department of Motor Vehicles, the California Public Utilities uh, 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 Commission have not been contacted by Tesla. That was according to them. And moreover, which is actually really quite interesting, um, there's actually three different uh, kind of levels of permits you would have um, uh, in California. So one would be um, testing with a driver. Uh, driverless testing and um, de deployment, so three levels. And uh, just to give you some context here, uh, Waymo, um, wait, hold on, sorry, sorry, not Waymo, Cruise, they're gonna be driving in Arizona. I guess they're gonna be hitting the road. This is a robotaxi, so I just wanted to show that their Tesla's not alone in this market, because again, the pumpers try to make you think that they're alone, but there's a lot of competition here. And then Waymo is gonna be starting again, I guess, uh, in California here. I saw this article as well. Um, this is actually what's really interesting about this. So this is in California. I just want to give you guys a sense of how big the market is for this stuff. So these are permit holders uh, testing with a driver. Okay, remember those three levels in this stuff. Uh, I could read through all the names, but I just wanted to, to list them all. You can pause the screen and take a look for yourself. But there's a lot of companies involved uh, with, again, they have permits, um, uh, testing with a driver, and Tesla is on this list. Now, when you get to the second level of permit, uh, if you want to do this auto taxi robo bot you know robo taxi stuff in california um these are permit holders who can who can test it without a driver okay uh, this is as of october 24 2023 uh, so apollo's on this list auto x technologies on this list neuros on this list and uh, waymo's on this list we ride and zooks okay and um everyone has like different um how can i say uh qualifications or guidelines so like this we ride one says daytime waymo says all times of day and night uh waymo has speed of the 65 this other one we ride has a speed of the 60 zooks has a speed of the 45 uh, apollo's like up to you know 35 they, they, they're all over the map this kind of stuff and, and you can look through yourself pause the video if you like the point of though when, when i'm showing you this kind of stuff is that um to get through regulations to get your robot taxes on the road it's not an easy thing right there's different levels of permits also, too, their FSD isn't even at, you know, the full self-driving level five. I think they're level two or something like that. They're still a long ways away. Um, this is level three of the permit holders in California. You can actually deploy your robotaxis, right? Deployment. Uh, Mercedes is on the list, Neuro, and then Waymo. So only three. 
And then also too, um, regarding the Waymo thing, um, it depends on uh, which city, and it's all of these, right? So you may be only, you may be approved in California, but only like a couple of counties or a bunch of cities. So Waymo has uh, the most cities by far. Um, also too, when you get in this stuff, and guys, there's a lot to go over, but again, uh, and I wanna show you the contrast because Pumper Channels, I understand it's fun. I understand it's entertaining. I know it's cool to look at like a bunch of funky charts that go, you know, really like hockey sticks, but <laughs> it's not realistic. Um, this is a, a, another really serious thing. I want to make no jokes about this. Um, somebody died uh, in the Tesla. Uh, Tesla settled the lawsuit. This was the auto driving thing. And um, this was back in 2018. Uh, it was a terrible crash. I think he crashed into um, a wall at like, I don't want to say it was like 60 or 70 miles an hour. It just hit, hit a, like the Meridian thing and it looks like caught fire. Uh, this was the gentleman here again, make, make no jokes about this stuff. Um, his name was Walter Huang. And uh, I believe that's probably his wife there. Um, so I don't think he you know, wasn't very old, right? And I think he had a couple kids as well. And so that's what the car looked like. Um, and that's him. So I want to understand that real, real people die when they, when they you know, go into these things. doesn't mean that everyone's going to die. No, not necessarily. Um, but the issue becomes is that you can get sued because there's so much liability with this stuff, right? Um, and, and the argument would, that you know, the Tesla people would make is that, well, you know, this, this robot stuff is going to be safer than people. Maybe it might be in the future. Maybe I, I, you know, my, my feeling is, you know, maybe with all the cars are, you know, contacting each other, et cetera. Um, but then you got a whole bunch of issues of like, you know, how hackable are these things? I mean, don't, don't bet against it. Hacking is a real thing when you start to automate stuff. I, you know, that, that's a concern I would say. Um, over my understanding is Tesla uses cameras for their um, autopilot stuff. Uh, the other companies are using LiDAR. LiDAR is more expensive. Uh, Tesla goes with the cheaper version. You know, whether or not the cheaper camera version is better, you know, for those of you who are engineers of left, you can make the determination on that. I'll let you guys decide that. Um, just my opinion on stuff is t Tesla always finds ways to cut corners. Uh, and, and, you know, this is why that they're behind the other companies in terms of their, their technology. They're just, they're not at the level they need to be. Um, it's just the reality. I understand the pumpers tell you other things, but I'm just telling you the reality. The other companies are, are ahead at the moment in terms of their abilities. Maybe Tesla can catch up and we'll see. Uh, it's certainly possible, but at the moment they're behind. Uh, moreover, this is another issue is that um, to ensure these things is going to be horribly expensive, right? So if, if, if a human uh, gets in a wreck with a human, you blame another human, right? It's your fault, human. Uh, the issue is like, let's say one company is responsible for a whole bunch of cars on the road and they get, you know, multiple, uh, uh, you know, crashes or whatever, they're going to get, you know, sued essentially. They're going to be liable for so much. So um, already insurance is very, very expensive. It's been going up considerably. Uh, let alone Tesla's are the most ex expensive cars to insure on the road. We've talked about this before several times on the channel. Um, so imagine like a Tesla is expensive car to insure, plus having it be a robot taxi. You're not even in the car, some robots driving around and et cetera. There's just a whole ball of wax with this stuff. Um, and, and I just, I don't see it happening anytime soon. Uh, moreover, the other things that, that, you know, that would preclude this Tesla stuff from taking over the world as the bumpers claim. Um, if you're going to be charging your cars, like in other countries, so for example, maybe in your neighborhood in USA, you can charge at your house, maybe, um, but not everyone has that situation, right? Be it in Africa, maybe they don't have the infrastructure for charging. i uh, be in Asia. It's too congested. People live in towers. So where are they going to charge, et cetera? It's like, it's a, if you've traveled around the world before, you'll see, it's just not a thing. Moreover, uh, the other thing too, which people point out as well, if everyone say, for example, love auto robo taxi things, and they're going to take them that actually hurts your car sales because <laughs> why well, have a car if the ro robot taxis are so good? So, you know, th there's just so many things going on with this stuff. And uh, regarding any of these things that and we talk about on this channel, I'm happy to have discussion debates I'm all day, every day. I'm totally fine. Um, the problem is the world that we live in these days is people just make stuff up. It's a real problem. Um, moreover, people get upset if you have like a differing opinion on them. And guys, I say the same thing all the time. Uh, we can uh, have different opinions, no problem, um, but we can't have different facts, right? It, it just, it just isn't, that, that's a crazy world that we live in if we do. So um, hope you understand my, my thoughts and stuff, and that's why I enjoy having conversations with um, people who are open to real conversations, and, and I hope you understand the difference between like people who are just nodding their head and going, yes, yes, yeah, like basically like a cult, as opposed to actually having a real discussion and real concerns that uh, people's lives are at stake with this kind of technology. So um, that's all I have to say about that. I like to hear your thoughts and uh, I'll catch you all in the next video.